She knew that I did lectures, and she knows that my cell phone is absolutely the other woman. In fact, she named it the other woman. <laughs> so she set boundaries. She said, Jazz, this is what I need. I need the cell phone to be powered off at the dinner table. And it was the way she said it with her British accent. Jobs, <coughs> I need the cell phone to be powered off at the dinner table, love. I t powered it off at the dinner table. But she also said that when you, I have sleep deprivation, when you jump up in the middle of the night to take a call or to make a call or to text or email because I'm running businesses, could you mind not jumping up? Could you ease out of the bed so not to disturb me? Go into your office and work yourself into a coma because I am your beneficiary. <laughs> no, she did not. But I recognized that the phone could disturb her. So I do this. I keep the phone on silence and it just makes a, a very gentle pulse to let me know that I need to respond. And the pulse is set only for emergencies. So I don't just take any call. Don't take just any call. And I take our, our time together, our quality time together very, very seriously. That relationship is that important. So when you make a decision that yes, this relation, all relationships should be that important. Otherwise, why are you there? Let's be honest about it. You're wasting that person's time and you're wasting that time, their time as well as yours, and you're gonna get what you put out. And one day you're gonna need them to show up for you, and they're gonna be distracted. Uh, so listen to what they're saying uh, when they say that those distractions can affect the intimacy, the communication. And when I'm talking about int intimacy, I'm not talking about making love, I'm talking about communication intimacy between two people. One thing I'd like to add, um, especially with DM bringing up, if you are the culprit. And again, I love what Jazz said, you have to make a commitment. And it's not even a commitment to your, your significant other. When you are the culprit, you have to make that commitment to yourself, knowing that you are going to do better and you're gonna do it for you. you know? And those things, when you make that choice for yourself, all good things are gonna come. Maybe if you make that choice to disconnect and spend more time putting your phone on do not disturb, you're not gonna feel as stressed out. Because you know when you're stressed out, it's gonna affect the intimacy of your relationship. So that's something that you have to remember. You're not making, it's not like I have to say, okay, I gotta commit to jazz that I'm not going to use my cell phone and talk about business from five to nine. It's, you know what, I'm gonna commit to myself knowing that I am allowed to have peaceful time where I am not stressed out. And when you put it on you and you own it and you take accountability for it, it makes a whole world of difference. Let's uh, address workaholics for a minute because it made it up to the top of the list. How many people in the room self-employed? Okay, so we have a few. Majority is uh, either works for someone else or retired, correct? Or both. Or both. Okay, so for the workaholics, this is something that, uh, uh, something I wrote many, many years ago, uh, lecturing executives about finding balance and believing that they have to work themselves basically into a coma because no one else can do the job better than them. You're going to miss me if I'm not here. The mail won't be delivered, the phone calls won't be answered, and nothing is going to move if I'm not here. So this is something I wrote for that executive or that manager that thinks that they'll be missed. So for you who think that you will be missed, take a bucket, fill it with water to the rim, and search your fist into the water, remove it. The hole that's left is how much you will be missed. <laughs> Again, take a bucket, fill it with water to the rim, insert your fist, Remove it. The hole that's left is how much you will be missed. Think about that. When you are telling your children, your grandchildren, you can't make a game, you can't go to a recital, you can't go shopping with your partner because you've got work to do. Trust me, if that bucket is in your home, you will certainly be missed. 
Understand? So for the workaholic, take this very, very, very seriously. If you've ever been to someone's retirement party and you know that a watch and a certificate saying thank you for 25, 30 years of service cannot replace the years you missed out in sharing your life with your loved ones. So 